Okay, we have enough information now to be able to proceed and get our game going on. I was talking about the three standard, uh, or whatever, the three system tokens being domain token, project token, and menu token. Uh, the menu token is actually not required. It's just if you add uh, a menu element to this sheet, uh, which we these days we're not doing as much as we used to do. Um, but it'll come up. So that'll be a separate topic for those who get into that. Uh, that's for the menu generator. And in effect, here's how it works. Um, oh, you know what? Forget about it. <laughs> VAR4. This is just uh, n number of results. Let's say like four. Um, it's interesting for those who want to get into this. But I'm going to say this is an advanced topic for guys who go, you know, more advanced with this stuff. Uh, because it's unnecessary for most of your uses. Um, for this kind of level where you're just selling great pages to guys and you're not trying to get too technical about it, you want to keep the job simple and sweet, you can sell upsells later, better things later, uh, get into more advanced training later, great. But right now, you actually have enough that what we can do is set up emoji profile and actually create our pages and stare at them. <laughs> so here's what it is. We have not put a link per se into the page yet. Um, that points out where the pages are at. You know, there's nothing here for um, for the sitemap that's going to belong to the project. So here's what I want to say about that. Every time you create a project, that goes like so. Okay, this won't take long, believe me. Okay, I know you won't. <laughs> there is a master sitemap created. And that master sitemap is different for every single project you do because, you know, your next one could be in a different folder, right? And the next one could be in a different folder, except you might think, well, what if it's in the same folder? The answer is if it's in the same folder, it renames the old master sitemap to master sitemap one to get it out of the way. Then it puts in the new master sitemap and it has a link on the new master sitemap, which is for master sitemap one. So it doesn't get lost. Okay, and doesn't get orphaned. Isn't that neat? That way the newest sitemaps are always up front and center. Okay, and that's very, very cool. And if you want to see it in terms of websites, this is the way it's been forever, industry-leaders. So this has always been the same. Let's say I went to the, the absolute major sitemap of the whole site. Okay, and what you're going to find is all of these projects, some are subdomains, some are projects like domain slash project. Others are just domain, right? Because they're subdomains. They all have a master-sitemap.html. So for instance, this says www. right? Which is a sure giveaway. It's not a subdomain run. It's a regular project folder run. There's the domain slash. And then the project is landscaping-washington. Okay. Slash. And then a master sitemap.html. Again, why uh, the sitemap per project? Because you're going to do different projects. All these are different projects on this website. Okay, entirely different projects. They all have lots and lots of pages each. Okay, each of them. So I get got just chunks of pages. Now they're broken up like this on purpose. You might think, well, wouldn't it be easier to have all these links on one page? The answer is no. Not for Google. More than 200 links, basically, and Google quits counting, <laughs> which points out another thing. Our newest links are always put in at the top. How's that for cool? All right. Step, or, but, 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 let me point out one more thing. Every master-sitemap.html, when you click the link, right, a lot of people would say, how do I submit all these sitemaps to Google, right? Because you got to submit .text sitemaps, and in the old days, people would have to click on one, and then they'd have to highlight copy it, open a new notepad text, you know, paste it. And then they go, okay, let me get more links, you know. And at this point, I just have to pull the font down. You can't see what you're staring at. <laughs> okay, there you go. And they go, well, I got to get more links. You know, I want Google to see all these links, right? So then they go copy, and they just, like, go through all of them. Now, that's insane, right? The question is, how do we get all these links at once? The answer is we came out with an answer. Here's the answer. For all of these sitemaps that belong in a, like a menu, this is a menu, and then the sitemap for the menu, well, there's the project that's on the domain. So domain slash project slash menu slash the pages in the menu. Okay. But let's step back. 
for all these projects okay that you can click on that has a master dash sitemap.html that's domain slash project and then master dash sitemap.html if you change .html in the address bar to .txt and hit go it will give you all of the links for all of the sitemaps in one place on a text file so that's all of those links in one spot so all we have to do now is submit this one link to Google and it will discover very quickly all of those pages it will start to index them and it will start to get them to rank for different keywords and our clients are going to get more traffic more sales more phone rings more sales inquiries all those things are going to add right up that's the stuff that makes our clients happy and that's what keeps them coming back to buy more pages because what happens if you get into a routine of selling them pages of 50 cents each and he starts to get a trickle more traffic from a chunk and then way more traffic from more because you're doing more projects say he keeps coming back and saying I'm ready to buy more pages I'm ready to buy more pages we had a guy once who wanted to pay 50 cents a page for a million pages half a million dollars at the time that was years ago we had no way of providing them uh, it was just too complex we couldn't do it and we really wanted to this is old uh, but anyway there it is it's all it's all interesting that way so all these right are different runs you know with all their own pages on them these are real pages on the website <laughs> all pages on the one website heck I haven't even checked this thing in a long time I'm just curious now it's like hold on we used to put them here for demonstration and so forth yeah 27,800 I was gonna say a bunch of projects do well for guys but really, this is a website with 27,800 pages on it. Just, you know, and pages we create on the fly. What if you'd sold them off at even 25 cents a page, right? Heck. Okay. So having said all that, how do we actually set this thing up? I'll show you. We have an HTML file. We have a CSV file. The HTML file has a domain token in it. And the one last thing we're going to want to do, whether we open this with Dreamweaver or Notepad, is we have to create a link. Uh, for the sitemap uh, if we want because if we don't it's just kind of silly because we ought to have one we ought to have some kind of a link to the master sitemap okay so I'm going to show you how we create it just somewhere anywhere foot or anything okay here is a link that's great so I'm going to use that as my excuse to create another link control C all right so I'm going to just um, I'm going to find a way to and where do I want to put it Maybe I want to put it right there. Okay. Or afterward. Maybe I got to make it a new. Um, you know what? I'm just going to make it a new tag, right? So, okay, fine. Here we go. Um, I'm going to make a new break tag. I'm just trying to think out loud. Okay. <laughs> They've got that coded wrong. Okay. And then I'm going to do a paragraph, a line to write. Okay. Notice how cool that is when you do these tags and Dreamweaver just fills them in for you because uh, it knows what you want. And then in there, I'm going to do a link. So first it's going to be called like related okay? or sitemap. It really doesn't matter what you want to say. Uh, project, you know, we say related meaning related pages, related for the folder. So it's up to you what you want to say. But take a look. Now I got a related, right? Way too big. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to put some font controls on here. Font, you know size equal like negative two take it down to okay and with that in mind I'm gonna close off that font command by the way since the commands work just in plain text when I get this thing done okay I just copy it and paste it in notepad so you can like copy down this coding there it is negative two now it's got to have a URL so ready here's where I'm gonna do it a link I'm going to say, believe it or not, and here we do it, domain. Okay, this alone would satisfy the criteria, just making sure that the, the sitemap link is in here. We are going to do a project because we don't have access to create uh, subdomains for the guy unless he gives it to us. But right now, he doesn't know us well enough yet to give us that much access to his site, perhaps, unless he wants us to do more, right? Now, that's domain slash project slash, and there it is, master dash sitemap dot html 
okay and just leave that be now if you really want to get technical you could have it open in a new tab so it doesn't confuse people if they happen to click on it but if they're clicking on it they're not reading this guy's message okay you would only have it open in a new tab so if this guy sees it or you point it out to him and he clicks it it opens in a new tab so he can feel like his clients won't get lost right there's a big difference between selling to the real client and selling to the guy in the middle. It's very strange, but those worlds are, they're often juxtaposed. Usually what the client wants is not what he should be getting. <laughs> it's an interesting topic, and uh, I'll do some stuff on that in a webinar at some point. Maybe somebody can remind me to describe the difference between selling to our clients and then selling to their clients or helping them understand that we need to sell to their clients, not to them. Uh, very different worlds. Okay, so anyway, I got that in there. I got it in there. It's in there. And so if I open this and scroll, it's here. Very small. And if I try to open it, it won't work right now, right? The link's all weird because it doesn't know what the heck any of this is. Because, <laughs> again, it's a template page. It's a model page. It's not really the web pages. It just looks like them. You can say it plays the web pages on TV. <laughs> How's that for a concept? Uh, let me get that closed. Whoops, I want to cancel everything. Okay, just got to wait on this. No, okay, got it. All right, so anyway, yeah, now that we've done that, so let's actually set it up. Watch this, Moji Pro, okay? And there's some funny little tricks to this based on just oddball coding, so pay attention. So first, I need the HTML file. I could hit Browse or I could just click in the box. And it's going to go somewhere. I'm going to navigate, get to the right folder, make sure you're in the right place, the right folder and everything, right? There it is. There's the HTML file. See, I clicked on base HTML file path. It doesn't have to be called base, but it has to be an HTML file. Boom. There. So we got it. Now I'm going to click in the VARS. I need the VAR sheet. It happens to be in the same folder because I'm being sensible. I'm putting it all in the same spot. So now that it we selected that, it's going to go back to that folder when I click on the next one because it's going to assume the var sheet will be in the same folder. Okay. Now we need a domain name, and I can see what it is from here. So I'm just going to copy it. You know, and there's the domain name. I'm just doing it now. I'm creating the var for that domain token. Now I want a project, so I'm just who knows. I'm going to call it uh, de, uh, demo. How's that? Okay, and it's going to be like demo pages or something, you know, demo keyword pages, key pages, you know, uh, key targeting or something like that. Keyword targeted, um, keyword targeted, you know, anything like that will do. Again, no spaces, no capital letters, no strange symbols, no dollar signs, no pound signs, no percent signs, just like that. Okay, always watch for straight. Some guys paste stuff in here and they don't see that. Okay, you got to be able to see that with a naked eye or hit the arrow back and forth key and realize it's there, right? No straight spaces either. If you did that, you wouldn't even see it, would you? It just will look right, but it won't be right unless you kill those stray spaces, right? Make sure they're all gone. All right, and the system actually kills them for you, which is just cool. It's nice to have that happen. Okay, output file extension could be anything you want it to be dot htm dot shtml dot html or it could be anything that you want it to be if you started with php pages and you need to maintain php coding and they got to be as uh, php or aspx or whatever then there you go usually html okay file count well we're just going to do a test first so let's set it low so it doesn't take long to process it won't anyway i mean i could do 100 pages and it won't take long whatever um I'm not going to upload to the server right now, but I've got to check the box because I need to fill everything in or this will not save correctly. As a matter of fact, we're going to hit save as instead of save. Do not hit save, hit save as, okay? And then immediately load it again to make sure it works without error, just so you can check that you filled in everything because you have to fill in everything in two places. One, okay. And so FTP, since we don't know what it is, we're going to fake it. Okay, and we can find this out later when the guy pays us to do the work and we ask him. Okay, but I will show you a better idea for this. You know what it is? That I'm going to actually upload this thing to my own tester website. So I'm going to go to moji-samples.com. All right, 
and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to call it, um, you know, Henry. <laughs> oh, Henry. Okay. Henry, it is. That's where I'm going to put this stuff. Okay. All the linkage will be for there. So the FTP info should match it, but not my case because they're demo pages. So it's not supposed to be the same thing until the guy buys. Then I'm going to fix this to be his stuff, right? Okay. Username is Moji Sam. Okay. Pass is the pass. Okay. Now you might think you can save it because we're at the end and the answer is what are we going to do now? Don't do anything quite yet. Well, you can. Okay. We got two places we got to go. One's the FTP there and the other is the next. Now that you filled this in, just go like click around or whatever, you know, whatever FTP. And here we go. We're going to do this. We're going to upload Okay, when we do the project, really, we want to keep track of our project, so we might just upload the whole folder. Doesn't mean you have to. You could check the box to upload a single file, and it could be the var sheet or whatever you want. But you need to upload something. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna upload this whole folder. I could upload the archive just to have an archive, right? Makes sense. Okay, I'm just gonna upload the whole thing, so you can see that it can be done. Now. This info does not have to match this info, but I'm going to make it match this info. Because <laughs> you might, whoops, got to do it again. Might have to upload it. Um, might have, it might need to upload it to the root. You know, like if you were uploading a file with all the images in CSS, you might need it in the root of the website. So it would just go into a different place. All right, let me just finish. Moji, Sam. Okay, and now I'm going to flip back. Okay, and again, just kind of touching this, right? This thing can only save as it goes. See how it loses info? It kind of sucks. I'm just going to hit next. I'll do this first. Okay, you should see a window like this pop up, and it'll give you an ID column. You'll think, what the heck is ID? <laughs> the answer for ID is it's going to number the pages off. So you can include it in your information or not, depending on you. Uh, one of the reasons for numbering is so that the URLs don't overwrite each other because something will be different, even if the rest of the URL information happens to be the same, because you're not going to use all of the variables in the URL. This is for the URL. Uh, I'll explain that in a sec. Let's just say this. I'm going to say Granger Residential Plumbing uh, Customers and ID. I'm just going to say that. Okay. ID. Then I might say, wait a minute, I don't want that one to be all the caps, so I'm going to take it off. Maybe I want it to be this one here. I'll put that in. And then I'll say, maybe I want this one down below. You know, maybe I want that one uh, up above. And you'll, and so these two arrows, of course, bring these in and out. And then these two, of course, sort the order. And so I'll get this in the position I want. Now, what I'll say is this. Okay. Uh, there are different ways to do it. I could use this in different ways. I'm going to make this my URL to finish it off, right? And that, this is how this works. Uh, here we go again. Format, <laughs> font. Let me get that big enough to see, okay? We're going to have our domain, okay? Project, if applicable. Menu, if applicable, okay? That's if applicable. And then after that, so far that's folders, right? And again, that's like HTTP, domain.com, um, uh, demo, demos, you know, uh, Chicago, right? Plumbers, right? And then a slash. Well, what about the pages? The pages have to go in there somewhere, right? That's kind of the idea. And so we have to continue our breakdown just to finish it off. At this point, by the time we're here, we are naming the page because that's all that's left. Unless we are putting slashes, in which case we're creating more folders. By that, I mean we could put slashes or dashes or underscores that connect these vars to each other from the top down to the final part, which will finally really be .html. We don't have to type it because it's assumed. But here we go. I might go like this. Plumbing dash residential dash Granger um, dash you know zero dash customers and then this would just mean dot HTML okay 
Now, if I did that, what would that be? That would be exactly that. That would be like, um, you know, var 8 slash, okay? I'm just putting it here so you keep it in mind. It's not that the words are going to be static, okay? Whoops, var 7. Slash ID slash var 4 dot HTML, okay? That's what that arrange... Oh, I'm sorry. I was saying slash, wasn't I? They're, they're not slashes. They're dashes, right? Sorry. Okay, take a look at that. That's the name of a file, right? That's this format. So one page will say Plumbing Residential Granger Zero Customers. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? It's the one page that'll say zero. Everything else will say more. One customer, two customers, and it's going to number up. I don't have to include the ID column. Some guys call those special offers. That way, even, you know, special offer zero doesn't mean anything to anyone. Special offer one, special offer two, they're just numbers, okay? doesn't have to be zero customers. <laughs> you can even create new VARs specifically for special offers or something. Um, you could even just take that out and put special offer dash whatever it is, okay? Here's the point. That's one way to do it. What if you said, but I still want more folders. I wanted this folder followed by that folder, followed by that folder, followed by another folder, followed by a smaller page name. Okay, well, if you want to do that, you can. You put in the folder. Now, keep in mind, this is a backslash, right? That's because at first we store the computer, or I'm sorry, store the pages on our computer before it uploads them. All right. And so when you upload, those get flipped to forward slashes automatically because it's folders inside of folders online. All right, but when you're storing them on your computers, folders inside folders, we need to use a backslash. All right, now really, I don't need two backslashes. I wanted to say something like uh, plumbing residential Granger. Is that right? Residential Granger plumbing. That's what I'll do. Uh, Granger residential plumbing. That's what I'll do. Granger dash residential dash plumbing slash, you know, computer slash, right? And then finally, whatever it is, uh, zero customers. I, I want to say something better than that. I might want to go slash special offers and then that and then end it there. If that's so, that's going to be the .html. And this, I'm going to get rid of it. So then this, double click or something, I can kill that. Now, how do I possibly make that say special offer dash zero .html, which wouldn't be zero except for the one page, right? We'll do it after the slash. See, this is just text. Now, if you do this, it's static on all those URLs. Special offer dash zero and dot HTML is assumed. So do you see how that works? Var seven dash var five dash var eight. Var seven dash var five dash var eight. And then a slash. So online, it'll be a forward slash automatically. Uh, then special offer, okay, text, right, dash, and then the ID number, dot HTML, okay. So now, when we go creating the pages, it's going to create all those variations and fill those in with the real words that come off the Excel sheet for each of those columns, right, and then fill in the numbers and numbers them up. Okay, want to see how this thing looks? Right, just to get it because you'll understand it. Right now, let's do this. Now that we have this done, we have to come out with a keywords folder. Okay, that's part of what we're required to finish off, and we can select anywhere from one to three for keywords. So we're going to do three, that'll be like three words deep. Perfect, Granger residential plumber and all the related VAR. So VAR 7, VAR 5, VAR 8. I want to save those three. Awesome. So when you do. Then we're just going to find a place to put them. Okay, in my project, in number two, and I'll call a new folder. I call it keys. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind do not leave any of these highlighted after you check mark it. The idea, you'll feel like leaving it highlighted, but the system doesn't understand that it's highlighted unless you click off of it. Okay, anywhere off of it will do fine. Just don't have any of those highlighted. Then go ahead and do your keys or before. It doesn't matter which order. Just don't have those highlighted. Okay. Now, we could auto-upload the related stuff. Okay. Uh-huh. Now it's filling it in. And i got to grab that box again. Okay. 
and that's going to be um, that. Maybe the archive, whatever. Now, I could upload it. As a matter of fact, I could test it right now and make sure that my FTP information is working correctly. Matter of fact, I can do it. I was going to say, I haven't saved it yet. Okay, there you go. It didn't need to create, but it did successfully upload to the server, so I know the information's correct, so we're good to go. Let me come back. Uh, let me go back to the first tab, which is the same as hitting the back button. See, back button, first tab, whatever. Okay, and I'm just going to hit save as and save it is something. How about like Henry Smith PHC, so HS, you know, P uh, dash L card. How's that? And I'm going to save it in the same folder so I can find this thing. Boom. I'm just saving it with the project, right, with all the other files. Okay. Now, again, we're not really going to upload this yet. Because we just want to check these pages out and see how they look. So now I can hit save. But, oh yeah, I forgot to hit load. I want to hit load. Okay, it loads just fine. If it shows me an error while loading, just kill the error and then go and finish off everything. Make sure this is filled out. This is all filled out. Even if you ha you can't touch this unless you check mark this. But then you can. Then when you're done, you can check it back again. Okay. And then on the next page, make sure that stuff is filled out and that this is filled out down here. And again, you could auto-upload those related files or not, but in the beginning, you're just testing it out. You're not going to upload it. You don't even, well, you don't need to, to upload it unless you want to. You could upload it right away, uh, but it's best just to check the files real quick and see how they went. So check it out. Here's where it's going to save them. Target root folder. C Moji Pro runs. Okay, next. And process. Boom. Okay. There it goes. 100 pages done just like that. And once clocked 100,045 minutes on this computer. You know. So really, that's an example of just how how it doesn't matter whoops, how many pages you do for a client. Some people think that the more pages, the more hard it is. Not really. You just change the number. Once you get the project mapped out, there's no real difference between that and that and that or that, except for waiting a little longer for all the pages to get done. <laughs> but when you wait, what do you think you're doing? Going and getting some coffee, taking a walk around the block, chatting with your buddies, hopping on the phone and talking to a customer or somebody. Who knows? Okay. So really, that's all there was to it. Now, let me go and see what those pages look like. Control V and go. All right. I got my Henry folder. That's what I thought would happen, right? Okay, because I created a folder called Henry. Okay, that's what I thought I did. So there it is. When I go inside of it, wow, I got all these folders, right? Where, where do you think those folders are coming from? Exactly, the rest of it. Granger Residential Plumbing, look at this. Angola Commercial Drain Snake, right? Um, Angola Residential Toilet Repair, Goshen Residential Plumber, Goshen Commercial Emergency Plumbing. See how we're getting pages for everything? By the way, the same VARs that are used to create the folder names are the VARs from the exact same pages. Okay, So if I go to Goshen Commercial Emergency Plumbing, whatever one or more pages I find in there, special offer-79, isn't that neat? ID number 79, 79th page. Then it's going to be about... Goshen Commercial Emergency Plumbing. It's going to say it. It's going to say it up here. Watch. View page source. It says, Best Goshen, Indiana Commercial Emergency Plumbing. That's the page title for Google. Meta description. Henry Smith PHC is your emergency plumbing expert serving Goshen. Call today for HVAC and more. Okay. We got our keyword says clients. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you recognize that, right? From the client slash customers var that had the capital first letter, the proper case. And then when you go down on the page, you're going to see the rest of it. It's going to say it somewhere in here, you know, uh, Goshen, Indiana commercial clients choose us, right? When you're looking for commercial emergency plumbing products and services, call us, right? And it's going to say it in a couple of other spots, right? It's exactly what we did. And then this will not work right now because we did not actually put the pages on the website, right? But it will work when that time comes. 
Okay, so that won't work until we actually upload it to the right place and all that kind of thing. But there you go. These pages are good right now the way they are. So what, what can we do? We can upload them, right? And if we're going to upload them, you know, then we can upload them. And so we might come back and say, all right, we're done with that. Go ahead and delete it. You know, I'm done with that folder. So I'm going to really beef this number up to something real. You know, whatever I'm really going to do for the demos or something, I'm going to create it. I want to really wow the guy. So I want a page for everything. Who knows? So maybe you're doing, well, you're going to do the full stack that you did, right, that you mapped out in your VAR sheet. And I'm going to put it up. Now, just for simplicity, I'm going to drop it to 10, but you'll see. So now when I go, and I can auto-upload the related files. That means these here. That means I don't have to upload them manually. They'll get uploaded right along with this process. All right. And then it may put up some more pages, and that's exactly because it needs some basic system pages to go along with it. And then it put up the related files, right? The ones from the FTP section. So there you go. I'm going to save it. I could delete this thing right now. You know? Another thing you might want to delete from time to time, just real quick. If everything goes smoothly and you don't need it, go into your My Documents. Okay. And there's a section here for Moji Pro Logs to see the logs. So take a look. See how they'll build up pretty quickly every time you run anything? All right. Now, you might say, what, what's the latest one? I want to see what it looks like. Okay, fine. So just uh, click the column for date modified or something, right? And that'll give you the most recent one. It's like 6.44 p.m., 6.45. That's this one here for 8.28. That's today. And, you know, I can... I can and Okay, it, it's giving me all the details, right, of everything it did. And then it tells me in the end or near the end whether it was successful, you know, and uh, like renaming the sitemap file on the server and so on and so forth, right? So there you have it, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> so it's been laid out pretty well. You understand what's going on. So, yeah, you just want to delete these because they can add up. Delete. And if there was an error, when you scroll down, like, let me look at something much bigger. Okay, if I scroll down. If there was an error, it would say something about error. You know, so often it'll say it was uploaded successfully. It just depends on the operation you ran and whether it was done automatically or manually. So just get in there and scroll to the bottom and see what it says. It's kind of the idea for the logs, right? So if you're having an error and you don't know why, if you go in there and look, often it'll tell you. Okay, well, there you go. There's that topic, you know. And whenever the guy would say, yeah, I want that project, what do you think you do? You go back in there, okay, and you ask them, literally. And you can open this. And when you do, it'll open the interface, but it will not open the thing itself. So you still got to load it up. Don't ask me why. It's just some kind of strange um, hurdle that we haven't figured out. <laughs> doesn't hurt anything. It's just the way it is. Okay. Boom. All right. And so then you say, okay, we know what's going on here. By the way, you would never do this with FTP usually, right? Host Gator, Host Monster or so. There's almost always going to be some sort of uh, element on the inside of this is going to be something like public underscore HTML, right? Where all the pages would go, would go inside the public HTML folder. Uh, don't worry about screwing up um, any one thing because, whoops, form submit. That's different. Form submit's different. That's a whole different discussion for a whole different. It's also advanced stuff for advanced guys. Um, but yeah, this should be the same public underscore HTML slash. Okay. And then I would use this on the end when I save those archive files just to save it with the project. So anytime the guy said, hey, my project's actually, you, you upload it and I found parts that were screwed up. And you're like, oh, really? I deleted mine. You know, whatever. Then you can download it again because you can find it really fast, right? It's like, okay, I would have put it here with this guy's stuff. You know, and so your own testing server is a good place to hold some projects temporarily if you're going to delete them from your computer. Otherwise, just save them in your computer, right? All right, so there you have it. There's the concept, um, and it works. It works really well. The other thing to think about, just to think about it at this point, uh, is this. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects, you want them sitting in a folder, maybe like project, but do you really want it on your desktop? 
or would you rather have it on like your C drive, you know, and you could call like AAA dash proj, meaning AAA, meaning it will show up at the top of the list on your C drive. When you hit this, it'll be like one of the first folders that pops up. I use a lot of 0, 1, AA, AAA, you know, to do exactly that kind of thing. I put a lot of numbers to get all my projects up where I can find them like right away, you know, um, and that's cool. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Another advantage to it, actually, there is an advantage. Um, URLs can only read out like 256 characters long, and if you happen to have too long a URL structure or URL breakdown by the time it gets to the end, it may not be able to create some of the pages because there are just plain too many characters in the URL. Well, think about it. It can't even start to begin to actually create you know, like the, the folder name, project folder name, and all the rest of the breakdown until it gets to the main folder. So I'm wasting characters here in that case. If I thought it was going to be tight, I'm wasting it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten already. And then it's got to keep going all the way here and then into the project, right, before it can even start. Okay, it's also missing this. It can't even start figuring out the characters until here. So all of this chops off from my 256 max, and that's already like 50, you know, or something. So just keep it in mind. It's better to put your projects, like you can move the project folder into your C drive and then rebrowse to find those files again. Okay. I can just do that really fast. And you'll see it. So if I cut this thing, you know, and I actually stuck it in my C drive, paste, and I um, rename you know, want to call it something like AAA, whatever. Okay, refresh this so it shows up at the top, basically, wherever that is. Okay, underneath the numbers, AAA proj. Okay, and then I want to come in here again and open this thing up. Okay, now it's got to find me all over again, right? So it doesn't know where. Okay, it does. C proj there, and that would be this. Now, these are the wrong paths, and so we're going to change them. Okay, now you're going to click and say that's where it is. See, proj that, and see how it straightened it out. And then finally, you know, this one, right? See, proj that, so that. By the way, the system will create a unique vars.csv file, not to be confused with your vars.csv file. If you named it differently, like who knows what, uh, plumbers.csv, then that would be called unique underscore plumbers.csv. Do not touch the unique file. Leave it alone. Only monkey with the actual var sheet itself that you're familiar with. All right. Then you're free to do what you want with the file counts and all the other bits of information because everything else will, oh, yeah, get this one too. All right, I was going to say it will match. Computer, C, AAA, Proj, wherever it is, there, and then finally inside of there, here, <laughs> finally inside of there, keys, right? That's where the keys go. Okay, and then save it, right? And then if you want, load it just to make sure everything's loading properly while you still have it open and have all the information. Yep, it loaded properly because it gave you no errors. And then, you know, you can process or whatever, and it'll be fine. And you can upload or whatever, and it'll be fine. Uh, if you want to see the pages online, let's just take a look at them. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. Last thing moji-samples.com slash Henry, right? I don't need to put the public HTML up here, of course. That was only needed for FTP. All right, those pages are there. Uh, the sitemap works. Everything is finished. And this is where I'm going to be able to show the guy the project. Okay, there you go. And we'll do more later.